Everything Harmony by the Lemon Twigs and Kylie. Yeah, I think to introduce the Lemon Twigs and where they're at on their fourth record here, I wanted to include this quote from Todd Rundgren that I had included in my review of this album. And he says, talking about the Diodario brothers, uh, they started when they were five and six years old doing TV and Broadway and things like that. So they have this built-in appreciation for music that is of a couple of generations before theirs. I think they were bored by the music of their own generation. And since you can't fast forward to the music of the future, you just start going backwards to music that was made before you were born. I can empathize with that impulse because I did that too back in the 70s. So the Libin Twigs, Brian and Michael Didario, um, and they've been around uh, since 2016. Their, their debut, Do Hollywood, uh, was one of my favorite records that year. But what comes along with them so far in their career is the comparisons to all these influences that they have pulled from. So that album, you know, we just mentioned uh, Brian Wilson um, is all over the big, their first single, I Want to Prove to You. Uh, Many Moments of The Who, Harry Nilsson and Super Tramp on that album. But I thought it was really a perfect debut that was retro, but showed a wide range of what these two guys could do, especially when I think they were like 15, 16 years old when that album came out. Then they came out with their sophomore slump, which was a rock opera about a monkey going to school. It was called Go to School. And at that point, I was ready to uh, drop the lemon twigs altogether. I just couldn't believe how they went from do Hollywood to this rock opera about a monkey, but do your thing, boys. Um, And then I think it was 2020, they had songs for the general public, which I've gone back to in retrospect and really gotten into. It came out, I want to say early summer of 2020, when uh, things were just not great and I wasn't into it. So, you know, it's I've given it the benefit of the doubt, gone back to it. Now it's a pretty good album. But here we are with Everything Harmony, their fourth album. And I think this is where these two guys, while their influences are still felt throughout, there's a lot of chamber pop. Um, the first track, When Winter Comes Around, definitely sounds like a lost Simon and Garfunkel song from Bridge Over Troubled Water. Or there's uh, Paul McCartney in the Born to be Lonely. We still get those things. But I think these two have really come into their own. It should be called Everything Harmony because their harmonies on this album are fantastic throughout every song. And, you know, they had some great early singles and In My Head and Corner of My Eye, um, which really, you know, made me go back to that third album and listen again to get into this one. And uh, I think did a great job of giving an overall idea of what they were going for here. Um, I'm currently still really into uh, kind of the rockier moments. There's uh, the big star uh, kind of Chris Bell sound of uh, what what you were doing is great. And uh, the power pop of Ghost Run Free that we just heard is just such a fun, upbeat song. And I think they did a good job of working those into a lot of these uh, slower harmony laden moments. Um, So, you know, it's strange to call the living twigs vets at this point, because I think they're both still in their early twenties on their fourth album here, but I really do feel like everything harmony is kicking them into this next phase that I'm very excited to hear what happens. And uh, this um, is, is one that I had some decent expectations for, but it ended up, uh, it's definitely one of my favorites of the year so far. Just a really great uh, cohesive vision of this uh, bygone era that, Brian and Michael D'Addario live in. 
yeah, I'd, I'd not heard of the lemon twigs before for this month. And uh, yeah, this quickly became one which I wanted to go back to uh, quite regularly. Um, yeah, the harmonies, I mean, yeah, it's perfectly titled. That's that's what it's it's all about. The the, the two brothers singing together in in, in beautiful harmony, mainly. Um, yeah, the, the the first track, when winter comes around, uh, for me was you know to stick it in with fleet foxes, <laughs> that that kind of vibe about it. Uh, so it begins re- really interestingly, and and and, ha- and not really knowing anything about them as well. That was my first uh introduction i was like whoa <laughs> this is different you know um which yeah they, they certainly are um and you get in my head which you just referred to as well uh love that track um really reminded me of elliot smith um and yeah i could listen to that one again and again corner of my eye uh, lovely slow again harmonious and I think when, when I first listened to the album, when it got to the fourth one, uh, any time of day, that's where it almost took the kind of levels. Okay, <laughs> it, it, this might be getting too much because they they pour everything into it, and um, yeah, that that one put me in mind of Bee Gees. But just when you think it's like they're going to explode if they keep sort of going up and up in the, in the vocal range. They, they pull it back down again with one of the rock numbers you mentioned, what you would do. And you're suddenly going, that's coming at the perfect time. <laughs> cause, cause it just felt like a yeah helium balloon going up and up and up. And then, <laughs> and they couldn't have gone much further in that direction. And, 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 uh, that one, there's not really any other track like what you were doing. Um, but yeah, it works so well in the arrangement of the album. Um, yeah, the one maybe one I struggle with a little bit. Every day is the worst day of my life. I mean, that is the the song. It's also the one line which is sung again and again, and it's a bit of a juxtaposition between this really happy music and obviously lyric, which uh, suggests that they're not so happy. <laughs> um, and actually, that that kind of runs through quite a lot of the songs lyrically. Um, again, sort of. They've been beaten up by love in, in, in a lot of these tracks. They're, they're finding their way in, in that, that world. Yeah, there's so much joy in the arrangement of the music, uh, the guitars, everything about it, uh, which I do like that sort of juxtaposition in general. Um, you know, I Don't Belong to Me is another really nice, soothing song. Um, one of the standouts for me is What Happens to a Heart, and that, that one is really just, you know, being absolutely gutted <laughs> about about your relationship coming to an end, you know. Now I know what it feels like to have have a heart, you know, broken. Or I've got the last bit of that lyric wrong, but just yeah, that is them absolutely inconsolable. And yet that song, but I think there's a bit of a, a horn section in there as well. It's it's massive in in terms of the instrumentation, really really engaging and such a great great song. Um, yeah, so it just, it just rattles on. I mean, Ghost Run Free, it feels like, and this is where I feel like the production of where things land, but at the beginning, it got, it got it all right where things should land, but that song feels like an ender. It kind of is quite different to a lot of the other ones. And actually you might not like this reference, Kylie, but I thought it, it was a bit like we are scientists, you know, we reviewed Loeb's, uh, earlier in the year. It was, it's so different <laughs> to the rest of their songs where they kind of embrace a little bit of, synth i suppose and uh, a bit more of an electronic kind of uh sound going on there so yeah that's just a pure unabashed happy song before they then bring it back again with uh everything harmony which is just great uh really leading off their vocals and then and the new to me is is maybe a little bit more, your more traditional folk song maybe something more you mentioned simon and garfunkel that's probably the closest I can get to to a reference for that that song at the end. So yeah, it was almost like the eleven tracks other is the album, and then you have these last two, which are kind of a, a bit of an epilogue. Um, but yeah, overall, just so much character, really fantastic singing, so much um, invention 
in in how it's all crafted and and a really enjoyable pleasurable album to listen to which uh yeah i probably wouldn't have done without the pod and carly's recommendation so yeah over to you carl so yeah so the lemon twigs i always end up confusing with the lemon heads completely different bands of course but two citrus based bands which i've previously only ever heard one album of each of them and i can never remember which one is which so i had to double check before going in uh which one was which uh but yeah so the lemon twigs record that i had heard before was uh do hollywood um so i've heard the first and obviously now the most recent and kind of skipped over the couple in between with you know Kylie, you mentioning that the second one's the Monkey Rocket Opera. I'm not sure if that makes me want to listen to it more or less. Um, <laughs> it's quite an intriguing concept. Um, but I didn't realise as well when they did do Hollywood that they were that young, actually. Um, so it's, it's making me want to kind of go back and listen to that one again, because uh, it's been a while uh, since that record came out. Um, but yeah, having heard it, Obviously now everything harmony. I'm quite intrigued to go back and 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 you know just revisit that uh, first album and see how they arrived at this point. Um, because you know as as good as Do Hollywood was, this one feels like a step up and just a really kind of special album all round. Um, you know from start to finish, it's. You know, you, you kind of mentioned it, you know, the comparisons to other artists are, are fairly easy here. You've got a bit of, you know, the Beach Boys, a bit of Simon and Garfunkel. I've got down a bit of the Beatles in there as well. It's kind of those ageless harmonies at the centre of the songs that really make, you know, the album as special as it is. You know, I could I could just listen to those all day, drift away um, and, you know, it's just absolutely blissful uh, to listen to. Um, you know, you mentioned that uh, fourth track, and Andrew. You know, I think I think some people maybe could find them quite grating if you're not a fan of that style. Uh, but as I said, for me, you know, it's it's just fascinating to listen to. So, um, and the songs themselves just so timeless. Um, it's it, you know, this is one of those collection of songs. That you listen to and you think i can't believe this hasn't been written before or this this is coming out in the year 2023 you know it's they just sound like they're from another time another place um you know kind of kind of reminded me of um obviously not sonically but um lana del rey in that aspect where you know the music just evokes that vintage kind of sh it has that vintage sheen to it and it evokes that time and place um they definitely have that going on in their music um and that's definitely what comes across uh in this record as well um i mean in terms in, in terms of highlights as well um take your pick it's it's all top tier you you know you mentioned andrew uh when winter comes around i actually had down uh reminded me of white winter hymnal by fleet, fleet foxes so i got that as well just an absolutely gorgeous opener to the record um so yeah a bit, bit of fleet foxes again a bit of that classic kind of simon and garfunkel um you know um era coming in as well um on that opening track in my head um that was one that i actually got a bit of the cranberries with the chorus um i'm not sure if it's the way the you know the chorus is kind of sung but i got a few shades of zombie almost coming through in that uh, really love that track. Um, Corner of my eye. Uh, again, just the vocals, absolutely stunning. I mean, you could say that about any one of these songs. Um, but yeah, that one, it kind of, you could almost see it soundtrack, soundtracking like an old Gene Kelly film. You know, that's the kind of era that it feels like it's from. Um, and I think the key thing you kind of mentioned as well, Kylie, was uh you know that it has got those more upbeat rock moments that kind of break it up nicely as you're listening through to it you know 48 minutes 
that's kind of like a longer album these days but you know songs like what you were doing songs like ghost run free i think it just kind of like really breaks it up and the latter obviously we just heard um nicely positioned um towards the back end of the record uh just to you know kind of send you off home happy um into the sunset um but yeah i mean in terms of the in terms of the top two um i think i got the same two as two as you andrew what happens to a heart um obviously we've already spoke about some of our songs of the year that's definitely up there as well it's got that gorgeous floaty melody you know the big epic kind of instrumentation that goes a bit sergeant pepper at times and you know those those little tin vocals that just kind of give you goosebumps every time that you hear it it's just you know really fantastic track um and then the title track towards the back end um you know that amazing kind of piano beat that it kind of rides all the way through um you know when the strings come in um and again i was getting shades of uh dolores from the cranberries uh in the way that he holds some of the notes um you know just just a phenomenal track and it's it's one of those albums that albums that's just littered with phenomenal phenomenal tracks um so yeah i, I mean i'm not sure what more I can say but <laughs> just a really fantastic record and I uh, second what Andrew says, just glad that Kylie made me check back in with the Lemon Twigs because really, really special record. So full of praise for, uh, <laughs> for the Lemon Twigs there. Mm-hmm. 